Welcome back to 5 Minutes Splunk. Today's video is installing Splunk 6 on CentOS slash Red Hat Linux environment. Quick note before we get started, I just wrapped up a three-part series where I walk through step-by-step -step how to stand up a virtual machine for Splunk development. And then based on user feedback, I created another video explicitly on how to use VirtualBox. Now VirtualBox is cross-platform and it's free, so there's no excuse not to download and start using it now. Again, I strongly recommend developing Splunk in a virtual machine. It's real easy to use snapshots, revert back to backup points, things like that. Alright, so what's on the menu? As always, we'll begin with some getting started links. We'll have a talk about the difference between Splunk and a universal forwarder. We'll go out to the website, download Splunk, and then we're going to set up uh, an SFTP client and transfer the install files to our virtual machine. At which point, we'll get Splunk up and running and make a couple very small minor configuration changes. We'll wrap up with some contact info and related videos. A couple links before we get started. First of all, my name is Josh. I'm a Splunk consultant. I've been on site to many, many Splunk customers, and this is my way of giving back to the community, showing tips and tricks, and sharing best practices. To learn more about me, click on the icon. If you don't mind, please, please like this video. The more likes it gets, the higher it's gonna show up in search results. If you work with Splunk on a regular basis, you should absolutely join our developer network. Basically, it's a chat room that connects Splunk professionals from around the world. It's a perfect place to ask questions, get real-time help, and generally just bounce ideas off one another. Click on the icon to learn more. And lastly, I push out a couple of these videos every week. If you like them, that's great. Press the icon to subscribe to my YouTube channel. All right, with that out of the way, let's throw five minutes up on the clock. And today we have South Park Ski Instructor Guy saying, if you install Splunk on your host machine, you're going to have a bad time. And that's just my opinion. I know plenty of people who develop Splunk on their own laptops, but if you want to take advantage of snapshots, restore points, and keep everything nice and clean, your best bet is to develop in a virtual machine. We're about to download Splunk from the website, but we're going to be presented with two options. We can either download Splunk or a forwarder. Well, Splunk is commonly referred to as Splunk Enterprise, heavyweight Splunk, or what I like to call it Splunk proper. On the other hand, a forwarder is typically called a universal forwarder, a lightweight forwarder, or a Splunk agent. So what's the difference between the two? Well, basically, full Splunk, Splunk Enterprise, can do everything. You can configure it to be an indexer, you can configure it to be a search head, a license manager, a cluster master, the list goes on and on. Conversely, a universal forwarder's only purpose in life is to forward data. This means it doesn't do searching, indexing, or alerting. It won't look at individual events because it's not going to parse your data. And unlike its big brother, it's not going to include the Python libraries. Now, this has advantages, though. It weighs in much smaller, uh, both in terms of disk space and on load to the machine, so CPU and memory. So what we're going to do is go out to the website and download the full Splunk Enterprise. Here we are at Splunk.com. You can see that I just logged in. Now all we have to do is click on the download button. That'll take us to the download pages. And now you can see what I was talking about. Um, there's an option to download Splunk Enterprise or the Universal Forwarder. Now by, by default, the Splunk Enterprise page came up and that's where we want to be, so that's good. Now the version that we're interested in is either one of these two. Um, depending on whether you have a 64-bit architecture or a 32-bit, you're gonna download the appropriate RPM. Now in my case, I have CentOS 64-bit installed on my virtual machine. So I'm gonna download the 64-bit RPM. While that's downloading, let's take some time and talk about how to transfer files from your host machine to your virtual machine. Now you can do it the old school way, which is to use SCP. Basically you say SCP, source file, username at host IP, and then you specify the destination directory. Now this isn't unreasonable, um, but it, once you start doing a lot of files, it becomes a pain. In my opinion, there's a much easier way to do it, and that's by using an SFTP client. Two of the biggest ones out there are FileZilla and WinSCP. Um, FileZilla works on Windows, Linux, and Mac, whereas WinSCP only works on the Windows platform. Now, if you're just getting started with this and you don't have a preference, I would highly recommend just always sticking with FileZilla. I've been using it for years and it's never done me wrong. So let's set that up. 
Okay, before we get started, we need to make sure that the virtual machine is up and running. So we're going to launch VirtualBox Manager. We're going to click on the CentOS VM that we stood up in the last video series. And all we're going to do is press the Start button. That's going to resume the session, and it's going to launch the console window. Now from this window, we're going to log in. We'll type in root, and then our password. Now the first thing we're going to do is type in ifconfig. What we want to do is double check the IP address that's assigned to this host. Now in my case, it's 192.168.0.10, but whatever it is for you, make sure you write it down. Once you have that, let's go back to FileZilla. Once you download and install FileZilla, it'll look something like this. First thing we're going to do is click on the icon in the upper left. That's the Site Manager icon. So we'll click that. Brings up the Site Manager dialog box. Now what we're going to do is create a new site. So we'll press the New Site button. And we're going to call this Splunk01, because that's the name of my host. And then in parentheses, I'm going to type in root, because that's which user we're going to use to log into that box. The host machine is going to be the IP we talked about earlier. In my case, it's this. Now for the protocol, we're going to use the drop down to select SFTP. And the login type is going to be normal. It's going to be the normal root user. All right, with all those settings filled in, let's hit connect and see what happens. You'll see that my host machine made a connection to the box, and now I can see it. If I click on the root um, uh, directory here, I can see all the different directories on the box. Now, the one I'm interested in right now is actually temp, so I'm going to click temp. Um, this is where I'm going to store the install file for Splunk. So over here on my host machine in the left pane, I'm going to go to downloads. I downloaded it into Splunk. And I'm going to move over the RPM, uh, the 64-bit RPM that I just downloaded. So I'm going to click it, and I'm going to drag it, and then I'm going to let it go in this pane. You'll see that the transfer queue opened up, and it's currently transferring the file over. All right, that's it. A lot easier than typing in SCP, and you can keep this FileZilla open um, the whole time you're developing. I usually just keep it minimized down below. All right, now it's time to finally install Splunk. The first thing we're going to do is launch an SSH client. In this case, I'm using iTerm, but if you're on a Windows box, you'll probably be using PuTTY or MultiPuTTY. So we're going to SSH into the host using the root user. Supply a password. And we're in. Let's take a look at that file we just transferred over. We're going to go to CD temp. And there it is. Now to install Splunk, it's very simple. All we're going to do is type in rpm-i and then the name of the file. I hit tab to autocomplete. And then I'll hit enter. It's going to go through and it's going to install Splunk. Once it's complete, we'll need to start Splunk for the very first time. So let's go to opt Splunk bin and we're going to do dot slash Splunk start. We'll be presented with a software license agreement. We'll hit Q for quit and then Y for yes. It's going through creating directories, doing housekeeping and creating RSA keys for us. Once it's all done, you'll notice that it says the Splunk web interface is active at this URL. Now, our host machine is not going to know what Splunk01 is, so we're just going to have to replace that with the IP address. Let's open up a browser window. We'll go to 192.168.0.10, and it is on port 8000, and we'll hit enter. And oh no, it looks like we can't connect to Splunk. Well, the reason why is because CentOS by default ships with a firewall enabled. So let's go back to our terminal window. And very simply, we're going to type in service IP tables stop. That will disable the firewall. 
Now when I go back to the browser, I'm just gonna hit enter for refresh. And voila, we're able to connect to Splunk Web. But we're not totally out of the woods yet. You'll notice a red warning message saying, the time on the server differs significantly from the machine. And that's true, um, but that's why we installed NTP during the virtual machine series that I created. So all we're gonna type in is NTP, NTP date, and then we're gonna go to pool.ntp.org. Nice, it just synced my virtual machine time with the real correct time. So now if I go back to the browser and I hit refresh one last time, you'll notice that that error message is now gone. All right, so this is the first time we're logging into Splunk. The password, the username is gonna be admin. The password is gonna be change me. Now I'm gonna change this to password. Again, we're developing locally here. Um, it's local to my laptop only, so I don't mind using password as my password. All right, it looks like Splunk is fully up and running. We're gonna close this uh, welcome screen here. And I wanna draw your attention to the upper right. You'll notice that we have two messages in here. It says, hey, you're low on disk space. Um, indexing has been paused because you have less than five gig remaining. Now, this is a default in Splunk 6. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna click settings. We're gonna go to system settings. And then we're gonna go to general settings. Scroll down to the bottom, and here you'll notice this value. It says pause indexing if free disk space falls below, and then in this case, it's five gigabytes, right? 5,000 megabytes. Now, if you remember back to when we set up our virtual machine, we only designated four gigabytes of disk space for this. So, well, of course it's gonna have less than five gig free. All we're gonna do is take a zero off the end of that, make it 500, and click save. And last thing, we're gonna click on settings, server controls, restart Splunk. Hit okay. And when Splunk comes back online, you'll have a fully functional, ready to develop Splunk environment. That's it for this video. Make sure to check us out on social media. Our username is 5 min Splunk. If you had trouble keeping up with the commands, don't sweat it, that's what our blog's for. Make sure to visit our blog for a full write-up on this video, including all the commands that were used. So until next time, happy splunking, and thank you for watching.